Hello Balancers and welcome to episode 7 of the Balance Theory podcast. What an incredible start to the month. Every single week we're getting more and more subscribers and I'm absolutely loving all of your feedback and reviews. So thank you to everyone who's filtering that through to me. You guys already know how excited I am about August. So if you hadn't had a chance to listen to Antoinette's episode from last week, I would highly suggest you go and check that out. Especially if you have a keen interest in diversity in the media and how certain stories are represented, difficulties when it comes to becoming a parent, and just overall a really raw and real conversation with an awesome woman. This month, I was also interviewed by Me Mortals podcast. If you want to know a little bit more about myself or how the podcast came to be, definitely go and give that one a listen. You can head over straight to Me Mortals podcast and check that one out also. So I know a lot of you are here for a very special guest today, so I'm going to wrap it up with the news and get straight into it. This week, I'm absolutely honored to bring you a very special guest all the way from New York City. For those of you who don't know the wonderful Andrea Rogers, she is the founder of Extend Bar, which is now a global company. Off the back of Scott Morrison's announcements regarding the restrictions around certain sporting facilities, it comes as absolutely no surprise to me that many of you might be sitting there wondering, what is bar? Health clubs, fitness centres, yoga, uh, bar I hope I've pronounced that correct. I might need some help with that. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is, to be honest, but um, B-A-R-R-E for those who are looking for the uh, specific definition. So thank you, PM. Whilst the country now knows how to spell bar, they may not actually know what it is. So for those of you still scratching your heads, it is kind of like a ballet inspired cross Pilates exercise, but I'll let Andrea give you the full breakdowns. And fun fact, data from Google showed that searches for the term bar surge exponentially at the same time of Mr. Morrison's press conference. So there you go. I was humbled to discuss with Andrea her journey in creating Extend Bar and leading it to where it is today. We also slay a couple of myths when it comes to interpretations or assumptions about the actual class. Aside from bar, we speak about how she found what it is that she loved, how she stays motivated, and she gives us some awesome tips about being an entrepreneur and starting out in a business. I hope you enjoy this chat as much as I did, and now I'm going to hand over to the wonderful Andrea. Good morning. Good morning for you, Andrea. How are you going? Good evening. Hi, Erica. It's funny. I was just just connecting online with uh, someone from Aussie. I should I should get my time right by now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. How's everything going on your side of the world? Oh, I don't know if you hear the news over there, but it's actually quite a mess here in the U.S. Um, with everything with COVID. So it's been it's been a little treacherous of a of a you know a 2020 as it has been for so many. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy here too. I, I do hear uh, not great things about the U.S., but I hope you and your family are safe and. and yeah, I appreciate people. that. We are, we're very diligent and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a one day at a time thing and it's just a new discovery of a way to live, you know, so it's just adapting and uh, making the best of it. And I hear the same with, uh, I hear the same with Australia that it's becoming a little bit, you know, we had our Melbourne studios that had to close again and yeah, really hoping right. that Wales is not. Yeah, that's right. Melbourne's gone into lockdown and we're sort of, you know, there's hot spots. I'm, I'm based in Sydney. Um, Okay. So we've got, we've got a couple of hot spots popping up again. So who knows? They're calling it the second wave, but I guess it's just oh. seeing how it, how it goes. Like you said, one day at a time. Um, thank you again Absolutely. for coming on the show and welcome to the Balance Theory podcast. Thank you, Eric. I'm so glad to be here. We're so glad to have you. So one of the biggest areas that we focus on um, is the area of fulfillment. So when we talk about fulfillment, um, it relates to, for a lot of people, their career and for others, it's their passion. And I think you're one of those lucky people that have been able to fuse the two. Um, mm. And so I'd love for you to share your story of how, I guess, did you always work within your passion areas and how did you come to, I guess, create Extend Bar as we know and love it today? Yeah, sure. That's a, that's a, that's a great way to, to outline it is to be able to marry something that you're really passionate about and turn it into something that you are willing and happily willing to work effortlessly, constantly, <laughs> diligently yeah. for. Um, so, you know, I started dancing from a very young age. I was three years old when I first began dance classes. By four years old, I was dancing competitively and doing solos. And then uh, at 12 years old, I started teaching dance. And then in my teens, I was choreographing and you know, um, starting to really focus in on trying to make a career out of it. 
And when I was turned 19, I landed my first professional dance job, which was working with Disney, which was an incredible experience and allowed me to, you know, leave home and live on my own. And I lived in Toronto for a little bit. And then I got to travel the world really um, with Disney on the cruise ship. And it was an incredible experience that opened my eyes to the power of doing what you love and how incredibly um, satisfying that was. And I said to myself with, after that job that, you know, I needed to do something that was, you know, that, that gave me that, that high that I, that I got when I perform. Yeah. And what did um, you to receive that at such a young age? That's great that you were exposed. You know, you know that's very, young. yeah. A lot of people discover that through maybe it's athletics, right? If they're involved in a certain sport in school or, you know, some, you know, that little buzz that you get that, that natural high that you get when you do something that just makes you feel so good. Doesn't um, feel like work. It, yeah, of course it does, and it, and it gives you far more back than than a monetary um, gift, right? That's so right. Um, after after that, I went back. To, I danced. I continued to dance professionally. I toured. I backup danced. I did a lot of different gigs, and I completed uh, college as well during that time. And after graduating, I had met my now ex husband, and we had moved to South Florida. We, I was in Michigan at the time, and we wanted to escape the the cold uh, Michigan winters and head our head our way south. And it was at that time, Erica, that I found myself in this just, um, the stage of bewilderment. You know, I had graduated from college. I had a degree in communications with a minor in liberal arts and dance. And I had, you know, loved so many things that I was doing prior to. And I thought, okay, well, now it's time for me to get a real job, right? That's what you're supposed to do after you graduate college. And, um, and I just... Yes, exactly. That quote unquote desk job. <laughs> and I started to look into different career paths that I thought were going to serve my creative side of the business or creative side of my mind, meaning I landed a advertising job and I thought, okay, great. Advertising's, you know, creative and I'll be able to apply all of that in, internal desire to create there. And it obviously didn't, it didn't land very well. I was going to ask how long did that last for you? <laughs> it, you know what, Erica, it's embarrassing to say because I'm not someone that gives up on something easily, but I also don't waste my time on something that's not for me. And within when six you know, weeks, you know. yes, you know, you know, and I was six weeks in, I'm like, this cubicle is not serving me. <laughs> <laughs> and I am not going to be one of those people that sit behind this desk and convince myself that this is what life is about because it is not. Um, yeah. Thanks. I just knew it. And I started to sit back and go, what do I love? What do I love? And of course I'd love professional dancing, but you know, you're, you only have a certain time frame for that in, yeah. in, in the industry. And I thought, you know, why do you love dance? And I, I, I thought about how much I just love movement and the joy of movement for me. And uh, through my professional dance life, I had also taken Pilates classes, you know, as a conditioning tool. And I said, God, you know, I, I love Pilates. I love the kinesiology element of it. I loved, um, I just, I just loved, you know, everything about it. And I thought, well, that's going to be what I'm going to do. And that's exactly what I did. I, I took a year to study classical Pilates repertoire. I became a comprehensive classical Pilates instructor and I fell in love with the movement. I fell in love with the philosophy. And I started teaching in a small studio in South Florida. Um, and I was teaching for about three to four years when I started to miss the element of choreography and the creative end of things. So as much as I love Pilates and still am an avid fan and practitioner today, it is very regimented and especially classical Pilates. It follows a specific order of exercises and certain amount of reps. And there's not a lot of stepping outside of the lines or, um, you know, out of the box. Yeah. And so I, I, I thought, you know what, I want to, you know, I want to kind of get back to my roots of dance. <clears throat> and I had taken some other bar programs before I approached the owner of the studio and I said, Hey, you know, I want to give this a go. I want to do my own bar program. I want to make it um, more based on Pilates principles and fundamentals. And I want to make it more dance, you know, not just, not just call it a bar workout or call it dance because we bend our knees and point our toes. I want to actually have elements of dance that are, you know, a little bit more unique. And mm -hmm. so she said, okay, go for it. So I launched the class in a small studio in South Florida. And within weeks we had a wait list. And so then I knew, okay, we're on to something. That and everything good. since then, Erica, has been organic. It has just been complete organic growth. And um, 
yeah, and here we are today. <laughs> Love that. Well, we've got plenty of studios in Sydney. And to be honest, my so one of my girlfriends um, has been attending the Sam Bar studio for quite some time, but I only really started to come across it during the COVID-19 period because mm -hmm. we, you guys set up the Facebook group and you started doing mm -hmm. uh, more remote stuff. And that's when I really got into the extend bar side of things and you know i absolutely loved it and i love that that story how you you know you i guess pulled together a lot of different things that you were passionate about and fused it into one thing which we now know is extend bar so i love that thank you so much for sharing your story absolutely. Um, I'm, you're doing it erica i'm glad you're experiencing it yeah it's so good i mean so this kind of leads nicely into the next point and i know you put up an instagram post about it yesterday so i won't get you to go on too long of a tangent but i think there is a massive perception especially for people who have never done the bar before that it's easy or that you need to be um you know that it's kind of like a girly thing to do and i know there are a lot of myths around it so i'd love for you to share your two favorite myths about bar and just absolutely bust them through the roof yeah, sure. Two only. Okay. Well, let's see. I did just post yesterday on Instagram on this. I did a TikTok video on it simply to, to, to slay those myths because, you know, one thing that we face as a bar uh, brand is that preconceived notion that that workout is not for me. I'm not a dancer. I'm not flexible. And I have two left feet. And that's the number one myth that we get that I'm not a dancer, meaning I'm not flexible and I'm not super coordinated. So clearly I'm not going to benefit from this class. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. It is because I am not a dancer at all and I've done bar. So that's saying something. Right. right. And, and the goal is to find your strength, to find your rhythm, to find that grace, but it is not to, to be a dancer. It is to find the beautiful benefits of a dance program, which is, you know, eat, you know, complete total body workout, finding your balance, increasing your flexibility. So what I say to those individuals is, is this is exactly the program for you. And the majority of our members are not dancers and do not come to the table with flexibility yeah. and incredible coordination. It's quite opposite actually. And, um, and they, and through our programming, they find that they find themselves standing taller, more poised in their movement, more controlled in their body, more attentive to how they move their body. And it's something that they learn in our classes and they take with them throughout the day. Um, the second myth that I would, that I would break through is, is the myth that, um, well, let's go, let's do this. Let's do the myth that bar doesn't really burn a lot of calories and you don't sweat in a bar class and that you have to do another kind of workout in order to get your cardio. <laughs> yeah, lies, lies, lies. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, maybe this doesn't speak true to all bar programs, but with Extend Bar, we're incredibly focused on delivering a total body workout that is going to tick all of those boxes in terms of strength, cardio, flexibility, and, and total body, you know, mobility. And, and that's what we focus on. So in our classes, you will not only burn a significant amount of calories, you'll do it in a low impact, right? But high intensity manner, which means you're not going to be doing things that are going to be disruptive to your body that are going to cause issues with your joints. It's, in, it's movement that is going to get your heart rate up and get you to burn those calories, but in a very safe, effective manner. So that, you know, you can do this, the longevity of this workout, Erica, is one of the most beautiful things about this program. You know, if you go into one of our studios, you will see a 21-year-old woman next to a 60 or 70-year-old woman that has been consistently doing it for years. That's and that is what I love about the program because both of those, young, those women are going to leave the class going, whew, I just, I, just, I just got an incredible workout. And they're both going to feel challenged in a safe, effective way. Yeah, I think um, that's, that's absolutely right. I think the program is for everyone. And what I love most about it is half the time, especially when, you know, they're instructing first, you're looking going, it doesn't even look like they're doing anything. And then you get in that movement. And you're like, <laughs> I don't even know what muscle that is touching. <laughs> but yeah. No, that it's, true? it's so true, Erica. If you were to be yeah, in the <laughs> of the class, it's like, eh, like I love when the, when the husbands or the boyfriends watch their girls doing the workout and they're like, oh, we got this. And then they take a class and they, they have to put their weights down within uh, you know, a few moments. 
And, yeah. and, and it is, it's an incredibly deceiving from, from viewing the workout workout. <laughs> yeah. But it is great because you, like you said, it's not that high impact movement where your joints and your mobility is thrown or just kind of put second. It is, it is um, really about bringing that balance back to your day-to-day -day life. And it's about focusing on those movements that help you coordinate and, you know, remain. Really functional. <laughs> Isn't that the whole point of exercise? I mean, yes, certainly yeah. we want to improve the way we look. That is certainly, there's an aesthetic component to it. But at the end of the day, what, what movement is really about is, is health and longevity, longevity of, of mobility, right? It's about creating a healthy body that can help serve you outside of those 55 minutes or 30 minutes that you're working out. You know, it's about really creating a longer lifespan for you because you are able to do more and you're able to enjoy life in a much more broad way. Yeah. And I guess that falls really nicely into our whole theory as well, that you know, you've got to find workout programs or something that serve you in the long run that aren't like yeah. a, a short little stint. It's really about bringing that whole body balance and it's, it serves you more on a day-to-day -day basis than, you know, a, a short stint goal for well, example. you know and that brings me to a very good point erica which is you know in order to see results you have to be consistent and that is the name of the game you know the number one question that i get is uh how do you stay motivated andrea people ask me that every day you know how do you stay motivated how do you stay motivated i'm in a funk i don't want to work out i can't get out of bed or i just want to sit on the couch and my answer is always the same you're not going to wake up with motivation you're going to have to find the grit find the determination and you have to do the hard thing. I always say just press play. And that doesn't mean like press play necessarily on your video screen or just, or your Zoom. It just means like just wake up, press play, get moving and do the hard thing first. Once you take action and you actually do it, you know that feeling after Erica, when you get those results and you're like, you get a high from the class. You're like, I just did it. You get that after class pride. Yes. Yeah. And the sense of accomplishment. And then it feels good. And then all the other perks come from it. The, the increased energy, all of the other things that come along with a great exercise program. And then that motivates you. So it's like, you got to do the work, which equals results, which then equals motivation. That's the cycle. Yes. So yes, it's all about consistency. Absolutely. If you're I think not consistent, you're not going to see results. That's right. And I think this leads really nice into another question I had for you. So I guess, you know, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not an ugly truth that there are good and bad days and that things are never, you know, monotone or consistent. And like you said, motivation, sometimes it will show up for you and others, it won't. So in your own life, um, I quite like what you just said, you know, you just get up and press play, you do the hard thing first. Would you say you have any habits or routines that help you or keep you on your steady path? Are there things that you religiously do that really just help you stay grounded and centered? Because I can yes, imagine absolutely. being you know, a mother and a business owner of a global company <laughs> is, is quite a lot to have on your plate. It's quite a lot during during this phase of life as well, when I'm also a homeschool teacher. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And the rest yes. of the person. <laughs> yes. And, and yes. And, you know, for me, I, and I, listen, I'm going to say this and, and I'm going to preface it with not every day is perfection. Not every day follows the perfect flow. You know, life happens and things go left and right. And when they should be going up and down, there's all different things that happen to us in life. But I think the more that you can lean into consistency of routine, the better you can thrive. Um, you know, I, I took that philosophy when I was, when my children were young and babies and, and raising them, you know, I think kids thrive off routine and I think adults do as well. That doesn't mean it needs to be something that is confining and that becomes a, um, redundant routine that that lacks energy and excitement I, I don't i don't follow routine to that effect but you know i like to i like to get focused on getting up in the morning fueling myself with it i typically start right now right next to me as i'm talking to you is i, I have my smoothie um, my protein smoothie i start my day washing my face and i and i stretch every morning when i get out of bed i get up and i do a quick five minute stretch to just first of all to take in gratitude yeah, it helps me to wake up and um, helps me to kind of like just get the juices flowing and it helps me to just assess the little things that in life that I should be grateful for. So I take a little mental note of that, that gratitude. And yeah. then I wash my face, I do my skincare prep, and then I come in the kitchen and I make myself a smoothie. Um, and then from there, I get through a few emails. I'll spend like the next 30 minutes on emails and then I get moving. 
Um, and that workout in the morning is typically a 30 minute, you know, at home power workout where I push myself as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. And then after I've done that, I'm ready to go through the day. Now, what the rest of the day looks like will vary dramatically depending on my schedule. But I know if I set the tone in the morning and I set my intentions in the morning, the rest of the day flows quite nicely. Mm -hmm. On the days that I don't feel like working out or pressing play in the morning, it, it ends up being a little bit I get it done, right? You get it done, but it's always just with a little more effort. Yeah, everything feels a little bit harder. Um, Everything's a little heavier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but I, I think you made a, a really nice point that I uh, resonate quite well with as well, and that is that your habits and routines they, they shouldn't be confining to a point where you feel almost like in debt to them. But no, they are no. those things that they bring you to ground zero. Or like, for example, exercise for me in the morning is something I do every day because it it reduces my stress and, you know, helps with my thinking yeah. patterns. And so it's not as though, um, so whether I'm motivated or not, you know, I'm going to show up because it, it's just one of those things that helps me make a clean slate in the morning. So um, that's I a great, that. yeah, that's, that's a great. I um, love that. Sometimes Erica, the things that we know are good for us are the things that are also more challenging to do, you know, yeah. um, that when it comes to diet or eating right, you know, or exercising consistently, we know we're going to feel better, but sometimes we just don't do it. And the more you can find that mind over body and mind over mind mindset, meaning like, you know, you just, like you just said, you just show up, you just show up and you just do it. The more you do that, the more frequently you do that, the more easy it becomes. It just starts to become routine and then it's non-negotiable. And you just, it's just part of your life. Just like you need to drink water and eat to sustain. You need to do these other things to maintain that mental state um, and that physical state so that you can thrive. That's right. And and the more you do things, they turn from rituals or routines to habits. So they just become- Yeah, and, and embrace purpose. habits. Yes, That's right. exactly. That's right. So I'd love to ask you a little bit more about the entrepreneurial, Andrea. Um, so like creating a business, you know, like- is that something you, you know, as from your six weeks sitting in your little, your little <laughs> desk, you know, were you sitting there kind of deep down? Was the entrepreneur knocking to get out? Was it, it was creating a business always something you had in mind or did you just follow your passion and this was sort of the path that you ended up on? You know, I would never have defined myself as a natural entrepreneur at that time, but in reflection, I always have been. You know, it's always been something that um, I like to be. I like to be in control. I like to I like to do things my way, and not in a not an abrasive way. But I just I like to I like to attack things. I like to take risks. I like to um, put myself out there, and um, with the purpose of helping to to, to help other people. Um, and I've always enjoyed. You know, when I was teaching, it gave me back so much to be able to watch these members have. Yeah life transformations. And it sounds so cheesy, Erica, but I'm telling you that's the best part about the gig is watching these members embrace movement and have life changes, just completely transform their lives by, by consistency of workouts. Um, so when I started Extend Bar, you know, I knew that I could offer something that no one was doing yet. And I didn't have any plans to make it a global business or to grow it to any extent. I just thought, okay, in my little studio here in South Florida, I can serve my members by creating this program. And I think they're going to get really great benefits from it. You know, I was doing it with privates to start and my private members were just having incredible results. And I thought, okay, let's, let's do it. And then from there, I think you know, I started to see the potential, but the first step, I just started to create a repertoire. I created a training manual and the goal was to just create um, an education program so that I could bring on more instructors to serve those members in my community because the classes were taking off. Yeah. And then from there, I was approached by an individual who wanted to open um, a licensed facility and, and take it to her home state in Louisiana. And I had no idea how to do it, no idea what it even meant to be a licensor. So I, I figured it out um, and everything since then has, has truly been very organic. It's been driven by a lot of um, uh, passion and energy to, to create and to, be, to, to grow and to, to make this something that's very impactful in many different areas of the world. But it was something that happened very organically and through the passion and through the connection of working with other incredibly talented 
um, and like-minded people, people that shared the same type of values and virtues that I did and that were in it for the right reason. Yeah. So did you have um, business partners early on? No, no, it was just me. <laughs> it was just okay. me doing, doing it all. Um, but I teamed up with, you know, other franchise studio owners and licensed studio owners and these other women who wanted to bring the program to their communities. And I learned a tremendous amount. I learned a tremendous amount because a lot of them were former business women that um, brought many different skill sets to the table, whether it was marketing or in legal or, you know, all the different areas that I needed to apply those skills in my business. I teamed up with people that were incredibly smart and driven women that um, fueled me in return. And it was, it was a nice little growth pattern there. Yeah. And don't you think that's such a nice, um, I guess, bit of advice to anyone starting out a business? It's that you can never know everything. You can't be the marketer. You can't do the legal. You can't be the face of the brand and, and also thinking ahead and, and doing the business and the accounts. And it, it's, it's the rewards you can get from bringing on people that are experts in those um, areas and that share your passion. It just can like tenfold your success oh, if you yeah. find those people early on. Yeah. And you know, in the beginning, you are all those things and you wear all those hats. In the yes. beginning, I did it all, right? Every single task for many years, there was nobody there to support me. But you lean into the people that surround you that are willing to, to give you those skill sets, to mentor you in a way, you know? Um, and you're right. You can't do it all yourself. You have to lean into those people and you have to, you know, and you have to roll up your sleeves. You have to roll up your sleeves. <laughs> you know, anybody who's interested in going into business for themselves. It is a full-time 24 seven, seven days a week gig that never stops. And that, but you know, I've been at this for 12 years now and I'm, I'm surprised and shocked at how much I still love what I do. And you know, there's not, there's days that you certainly have burnout or weeks or months that you get burned out or even years, but I just, I love what I do. And I have this, I don't know. I feel like I'm just as passionate as I am today about everything that I was when I started. Yeah, and that's I, that brings it back to your why, and it's so important to know your why and have, you know, a bit more than money as your why. Because oh, a hundred percent, absolutely. Term that that sort of um, purview will burn out quite quickly. Um, just quickly, while we're still on this point, were there any other solid practices you adopted early on in the business that you think have served you or attributed to the success of the company? I mean, I will always say that it's, it's picking the right people to work with. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the catalyst to, to my growth. It is, it is not, obviously not solely that I'm me. It's been really picking the right partners. Um, and also a lesson that I learned, not something that I would say was a successful, but something that I was a mistake that I learned. Um, and I, if I re pressed rewind, I would, you know, I, I, I really wish I would have stayed a little bit more local in the beginning and really, really more perfected um, the studio platform and really dug into that rather than go for that growth. Again, everything was organic. And, and so it just, you know, it just happened very quickly. But anybody who's out there who's looking to, you know, create a business, I think we all have this mindset that more is more, um, more locations, more, more products, more things. Um, it's going to sound good and it feels good to say that. And it's all these other things, but it's also a lot more to manage yes. and a lot more headaches. So um, sometimes having something that is very small and manageable is wonderful before you spill it. Um, so I would say, you know, really dig into what you've got, um, hype, be hyper-focused in a, in a more localized way. Um, and that will allow you then to decide the next direction, but really stay comfortable with being small for a little bit and doing that incredibly well before you start to focus on the growth and the, and the scaling of the business. Mm, great tip. Love it. Um, last sort of thing I want to touch on is I know you are a mom, which in itself is super commendable. I mean, I admire all mums out there and, and, you know, being a mom and a businesswoman is just, you know, like hat off to you. Um, I know you moved to New York with your two girls. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about how that, how that process was for you? Um, was it a bit of a challenge? And in hindsight, do you think um, it was the best thing you did? Sure. Yes. I think, you know, people kind of look at me and their head tilts and they get that little, the eyebrows raised when I tell them I moved as a single mom to New York City with my two girls. <laughs> um, you know, people are quite surprised to hear that whenever I, I mention that. But for me, Erica, New York City and living in New York City was a 
I guess you'd say a dream of mine since I was a young girl. I came to New York City on a frequent basis as a teenager to study dance here in the summers. Um, and then through ExtendBar's um, growth, I started to frequently find myself in New York City, whether it was training you know, the, the celebrity clients, um, my publicist was here, my investment partner was here, you know, a lot of the people that I worked with were here. And so I would come here at least once a month. And it just got to the point where I said, you know what, I have to make this decision in my life. And if, I'm not, if, I'm, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And I also wanted my girls to be raised in a place that would give them a little bit more grit and a little bit more, you know, drive and a little bit more um, awareness of what life is. Um, you know, where we were living in South Florida was a little bit of a bubble and a little bit of an entitled bubble, to be honest with you. And I just wanted to get them out of that area and into a place that was more reflective of what the world really is. And I would, and I felt like it would serve them well in, in their life. You know, if you can grow up in New York city and thrive, you can, you can live anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I do um, hear that. I know that I, no, I haven't been to New York, but I do hear that yeah. about it. <laughs> It is, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a gritty, there's gritty elements of it and there's incredibly sophisticated elements of it. And I just, that's what I love about this city is, is that diversity that it offers. Um, but it was, I will tell you, it was the best decision I ever made. You know, my girls and I came here and both, all, all of us, all three of us just, you know, there, we just thrived. Um, and of course we moved here last January and this January, you know, the world changed for us. And now it has been a, you know, a, a completely new city that we're living in. Um, and it's a, a new navigation for all of us, you know, navigating through this new, you know, COVID-19 New York City. It's a different world, um, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, I may take time away from the city with my girls just to escape a little bit, but um, yeah, we're, we're here. We're here to stay. Yes, and I, I don't think your vision or passion's going anywhere either. Which <laughs> um, <laughs> is great for all of us. Um, just on, uh, this is a final note. What advice would you have given to your younger self? You know, I think that the advice that I'd give is this is what I just reflected upon, which is, you know, be okay with not being the biggest, be okay with, you know, um, doing what you do very well and be happy with where you're at. Uh, too many times right now in, in culture, we are so into this comparison game whether it's comparing our bodies, comparing our success, comparing our parenting skills. It's just this mad game of comparison, which social media, you know, pulls us into, and it can be incredibly toxic. And so I think, you know, looking at other brands that are similar to yours or looking at other women that are similar to you and comparing your life to them or their success or their scaling or their growth, it's going to be something that is not going to serve you. So instead, just, you know, be aware of your competitors, right? But don't dig into um, letting that, that rule, rule your decision making and make sure that you just are happy with where you're at um, and, you know, take the time to really perfect your craft. I love it. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really thank appreciate you, Erica. it. And I can't wait to share it with all our listeners. Um, all the best with everything moving forward. And I can't wait to see where Extend Bar goes in the future. Thank you, Erica. And I miss you guys. Normally I'd be coming to Aussie here in a, in a few months and I'm not this year. So I'm going to hopefully be there next year. Next year. Yes. I can't wait. Thanks so much, Erica. Have a wonderful so day. Much. You too. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. And that's a wrap for this week, Balancers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today. As always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced.